Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee, getting ready to start my day, get some squats and everything going. See, that was a real coffee sip. You could hear it. Got my calibrated two-pound coffee cup with a mini band on it. Got 50 pounds of band tension, and of course, hook grip. But look at that. That's real coffee. No fake coffee in there. Of course, people are going to claim it's decaf. We want to see some lab testing on it. All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about grip, since you saw me with the hook grip. Uh, you know, my stance has changed over the last year, really, when it comes to grip training. Uh, I used to tell guys, because again, I'm a fan of minimalism. I honestly believe that the majority of people at any given time probably don't need more than about 10 exercises. I'm not really big on this massive exercise variation. I think variation should be used uh, on occasion to get through the law of accommodation, variation be used with your accessory work. I think generally primary lifts need to be left alone and I think people don't need a lot of accessory work. And I used to say as far as grip goes that most people out there throw your straps away and then you won't need to worry about your grip. For most guys, if you're doing enough rowing, deadlifting, chin-ups, all that stuff without straps and you just get good chalk, uh, it shouldn't be a problem that your grip is probably going to be okay and I've always done a little bit of grip work but I've kind of been a minimalist in that but I've realized over time my grip still hasn't always been where I've wanted it to be uh, I'm trying to get brutally strong now as I get older and I don't want to have weak links like that furthermore something else that I've realized that I've thought of more and more uh, just has to do with the fact of being strong and looking strong and I always tell people you're only as strong as your weakest link like some someone says oh this guy over here he's doing five reps with 600 pounds on on the deadlift but then I look and he's got straps on and it's like well can he even pull 600 for one without the straps you know if you never see it you don't know and the question becomes yeah his back and everything is strong but is he strong you know furthermore grip training tends to give you bigger thicker forearms you can tell when you see someone that they've got a strong grip. There are guys who don't even lift, who if they do a ton of manual labor, you see their hands and their forearms, and in your head, you know that's a strong guy. If, you, if you've ever done any arm wrestling with some of these guys, or grappled, or, or just picked stuff up with a lot of these guys, you start realizing their grip strength is oftentimes better than the gym bros. And these are guys who don't even lift a lot of times. Uh, and for me, because for a long time I did work around industrial mechanics because my dad's work, I went and did some work with them also over the years. I've done uh, industrial mechanic work in the past in the hydrogen and natural gas industry. <clears throat> you meet a lot of guys <clears throat> who pick up heavy stuff all day, turn big heavy wrenches all the time, not what you're thinking of with, with your uh, cars. You start meeting guys who have this really serious grip strength and you start to realize there's something to be said for grip strength and it gives a different look. You can look at someone's forearms and tell that guy can grip. That guy's probably got an iron crushing grip. All right, and, and in a certain way that commands its own set of respect and it's something that even a lot of the aesthetics guys should probably think about. Like, do you want to actually look strong? And there are certain things when you see another guy, you know that he's strong or not. You know, it's not just about the show muscles. Is a lot of this secondary stuff and so what I would say to people do some extra grip work I tend to be of the opinion and the way I've leaned more and more is that not only should we not be using straps because guys say well my grip gives out well if your grip is giving out on your volume pulling maybe you have a grip deficiency maybe you need to work on that and that's kind of the point it's like you shouldn't have that problem uh, you really shouldn't have that problem. And if anything, because you're now having to use a crutch, you're shortchanging yourself. It's like me. I'm not of the opinion that people need to be trying to isolate muscles for the most part. So you're now losing a very important muscle as far as looking strong goes by having to use straps and other stuff even for your volume pulling. Uh, it would probably be better if you just went ahead and did some extra grip work. And the, the fact of the matter is it just doesn't take that much time. Uh, I would say that for me, my daily grip work takes five minutes out of my day. It takes five minutes. And it's done after my other training. Uh, and what I tend to use these days, I have pinch blocks. And I have, this is my smaller ones. I have two inch and three inch ones. I have a pair of each. And essentially what you do, see how you grip it, you pinch the weight and you hang plates from here. I have a, a rod that basically lets me put weights on it. I drop my plates on there and I do holds with it with both hands. 
uh, and you can do them in sets. You know, you can count them for 10 seconds, 12 seconds, whatever you need to do. And you can actually progressively build your grip up using these, and then you can rotate through the different blocks. You can have just one. <clears throat> I haven't even been using my three inch ones. I mostly use a two inch, but eventually I'll mess with those too. But the point is you can do pinch blocks. Or what the old school guys used to do, this is just a convenient way to do it. It's a convenient way to be able to micro load so that you can progressively overload. But what a lot of guys used to do is if you're using the, the, the flat faced iron plates instead of stuff with a ridge, and most of my plates have ridges, uh, learn to pick up pairs of plates. You know, start with a pair of fives, pinch two together. It's the same concept as this, because if, the, if this, your grip slips or your pinch slips at all, this slips right out of your hand. But same thing can be done with a pair of fives. You go up to a pair of tens, a pair of twenty fives. Pair of 35s, and I can tell you right now, usually guys who can pinch grip a pair of 45s and pick them up, flat face, where they've got their, their hands on the flat faces, not on ridges, again, you guys know the older style ones, you can build a tremendous grip just picking up pairs of plates. And, and I can tell you right now, if you see a guy who can walk over and pick up a pair of 45s with the flat faces out, pinch together and can pick them up and hold them for a few seconds, that's a guy with a serious grip, and a lot of people might be like, well, that's only 90 pounds. Trust me, it's not the same as holding 180 on a bar with two hands. It's not even remotely close. Um, in fact, a lot of you guys get a pair of pinch blocks. You're going to be surprised <laughs> when you first start out. If you don't already have a decent grip, you might find 25 pounds is pretty damn heavy, even to hold with that pinch block if you haven't built your grip up yet. You're going to be shocked. Uh, but uh, stuff like this is a great way to build your grip, just learning to do hangs off of your chin-up bars. And I kind of do that after I do all this too. Uh, but there's a lot of other valuable grip tools out there. But I think anything that forces you to pinch your grip, absolutely beneficial. Um, and this is the, the stuff that doesn't damage equipment. Like we could talk about block pulls, we could talk about rack pulls at the very top for building grip. But you're also risking, particularly if you're forced to use a power rack, you don't have access to blocks. You end up damaging equipment in your gym. You end up bending bars. Uh, you end up putting a lot of stress on your lower back and your entire spine that may interfere with your recovery, uh, meaning it, it, it's not the best option. You're probably better off finding a way to do pinch grip type training instead of doing that stuff. Uh, and I've personally used Captains of Crush grippers and I can honestly say I like the pinch blocks better than the grippers. I feel like they give a better, better effect. Uh, but at the end of the day, guys, this is what it comes down to. It's about fixing weak links, and it's about being strong. It's a question of, you know, I mean, do, do you want, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Do you want to be strong? Uh, and honestly, man, dedicated grip work doesn't take that much. And a lot of people use the excuse of, you know, well, I'll just wear straps and I'll just do grip work afterwards. But it's like, will you? And how much better off would you be if you just get to the point to where you can do all of your pulling, without straps. Uh, even do what I'm doing. I've been learning the hook grip. You guys are watching me now do my hook grip stuff on camera. Uh, I'm building up my hook grip. Um, I'm starting to think that for powerlifting purposes that might be the way to go. The weightlifters have been doing it forever and it's coming more into vogue in powerlifting and honestly I was resistant to that. Again I sometimes have a traditionalist mindset but at a certain point when you are given a new tool uh, that does seem to be better can have some drawbacks but has some real benefits and other people are doing it very successfully it might be time to consider it, particularly if it makes sense I mean and I used to be stuck in my old ways with that of you know mixed grip but you know I've also torn a bicep uh, I also have some muscle imbalances potentially from it and I used to be resistant to that fact but you know I've got DEXA scans I got DEXA scans showing me now there's other factors because of my old injury that's probably contributing to that to some extent because my left back probably dominates a little more. It's had to develop to pull evenly on rows and chin-ups and stuff because of my torn bicep. So I probably do have a stronger left lap, which means more muscle in it. But the mixed grip has probably contributed further to that, you know? So we've got that and you've got the fact that you can get more even pulling mechanics. And that's a big deal. I mean, if we're talking about stopping muscle imbalances from compensatory strength, just learning to hook grip. Um, again, that's getting sidetracked from our topic of grip training, but it's not really, it, it really falls into the whole thing. And at the end of the day, you know, I mean, people say, oh, the hook grip hurts. And I was like, yeah, I remember you guys were me whining and crying about it. Now I'm not anymore. Now I'm uh, pulling over 400 every day. 
do my deficit pulls with it, building it up. Eventually I'll get it up a lot higher. And now it's no longer painful. It's mildly uncomfortable. You know, it just takes a few weeks of kind of learning it correctly, finding the form of hook grip that works for you, and then problem solved. Uh, doing stuff like that, and then, you know, combining it with grip training. And like I said, you don't even need stuff like this. I mean, we, we talk about things like rack pulls for grip training and block pulls, and that's okay. But again, that's a lot of extra work to set up. A lot of extra recovery that may not be giving you anything more than you could be getting with some sort of various pinch training. And if you don't want to buy a pair of things like this or have to carry them to the gym or have a home gym, that's fine, guys. If most of you guys go to a gym that still have some of those smooth iron plates, learn to grip those together. And if you don't go to a gym like that, then you might want to dish out the $20, $30 for a pair of these. You know, they're not that expensive. Uh, you can either get a chain or you can get, if you want to spend more money, one of the uh, little rods like I have that you can hang them from. Uh, but do that extra grip training, guys. It's really going to pay off in the long term, not just in terms of, of your overall strength. It will in terms of your strength and being actually really strong, because, again, grip strength is a big part of your strength. Uh, it's going to change your look to a certain extent. Again, if you want those thicker forearms, you know, to where you look strong, like when someone sees you and says, man, they look strong, because how many guys you see out there who've got big shoulders and chest and biceps and everything, but then they have no forearms? You know that they're not really that strong at the end of the day with, with true strength and it shows when they have to do certain things all right guys but that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i will talk to you guys next time